So they're going to have to take those team fights. They're going to have to draft, play around a team fight, and get together early. You can see whenever they start to fall apart, it's like they notice it. They group as five and they go in. They need to do that before there's any falling apart. And that's one of the things. We keep going back to the fact they do have three substitutes here, but finding that synergy in such a small space of time and working out those small kinks can take a little bit more time. Than it takes a little bit of use to uh, comfortability with one another, but either way, Optimus Gang, you know, they won the last set. They looked like they were making a comeback, actually, in the first game when they found that D side around the 21 minute mark when Shadow Nightmare overextended after the Capri revive was already down. So there was small hope despite them losing in this first game. Well, game two is on the cards any minute. Now they pick some bands and just get themselves ready for that one. Jean Kui, will we see potential ban there? Was Jean really the biggest issue that we could? I don't think so. I think they'll change their own picks and their own team strategy before they worry about banning specific gods. From that's them. one thing you can do as well, I guess, Tully, is that if you do see Jean, you don't have to ban it because there is counter picks to Jean that we know about. If I was to take one god out of the draft from Lion Guard, I would pick the Capri to try to focus focus out to make sure that they don't get it, whether you ban it or you pick it yourself. I'd also like to see if Optimus do manage to get Susana over to Gorgonzola again. His performance on that was pretty solid. In the background there is their coach with the laptop standing there, giving more detailed information about what they could potentially do with their strategies. They are going to be first pick though, so I guess they're hoping here for a Scardia Cabracket if the dream comes true weekend. That's what it seems, that Scotty is probably the ideal first pick, but I'm thinking we're going to see a ban again more than likely. Optimus will have the first option. It will be the Terra taken away, which limits one of their potential first picks. It's not been one that they personally have gone for, but they have drafted it later on in the drafts. Pretty standard ban out of both of these teams, taking away these Guardian options. Cabracken, Guardian, but not necessarily in that support position every single time. A lot of flexibility with that pick. Kepri, like we mentioned before, onto Frezzy was a big issue. I think the Kepri ban there is warranted. Well, I'm wondering, Chunga's not banned yet. So are we going to see a ban from Lions Guard on that, or are we going to see a first pick? To be fair, though, Europe hasn't really played that much Chunga so far this year, Tully. It's more of a North American thing, honestly, but it could slip through. They've been experimenting it with it. Captain Twig comes to mind out of Obey Alliance. The question is, have these lower tier teams been practicing with it? And it doesn't seem that Optimus Gang are comfortable with first picking it unless they want Lion Guard to pick it so that they can counter it. Well, Landbats is in the house <laughs> is what's happened here. He was banned a couple of times ago. Hunbats is an awkward one here weekend in my opinion because normally at land we don't see too much of him because everybody can generally see the fear no evil coming so i hear the fear no evil coming before they even need to and get the beads you're off. able to react a lot better on land but it seems like people are playing around that these people who are pulling out the hunbats i mean he's sticking to traditional junglers sure. kind of like skeleton was at first and if he plays hunbats safe and smart he'll be fine but also hunbats even though you can hear the ultimate on land you can also play hunbats better in a land situation also Very you can true. hit that third ability at a much greater rate of succession well, Frezzy's going to go back to his infamous Sylvanas play here. So a little bit more of an aggressive style. More than likely will be a little bit more on the forefront and the Medusa. But look at this, Anatoly. Hmm. Optimus Gang have picked up Cupid and taken the Junkui for themselves. So I like the Cupid pick because we've seen a lot of Cupid so far in the gauntlet being successful. The Junkui taking that away from Lion Guard. Now, if, Ly if Optimus Gang have been practicing the Junkui themselves, then I like this idea. But if they haven't been practicing Junkui and they only picked it just to make sure that Shadow Nightmare doesn't pick it, then I'm a little bit of a questionable factor as to why this has been locked in. When this happens as well, we, when you when you see teams do this, do, is it normally the fact that teams, you expect them to just want to take it away from their opposition more than they've actually practiced it themselves? That's what I'm thinking the Cupid might have been picked a little early, but I was saying they needed a team fight, and you see three of one. the biggest circles that you could have for a team fight. Talking about circles, though, there is one more added by Lion God. Now that Shadow Nightmare can't pick up that jean he will go over to the Zeus. The Zeus is going to provide a lot of damage, and without the Capri to really provide a lot of protections for the Jean Kui. There has to be more ideas on how to protect your mid mage. Now, Cupid Hearts is all fine and dandy, but that's going to come on later in the stages of the game. Yeah, a lot of damage on the side of Optimus, but they are going to have to draft some defense, and that's where you can see Lion God are going to take away Odin. Fantastic at setting up for potential kills by locking everybody in the ring, and those three gods that Lion God have drafted would really struggle there. It's surprising that Lion Guard ban Odin, considering they have the next pick. Both of these compositions sort of struggle with an Odin pick. Where do you want to see? Can we see a Nemesis ban coming out here? Or I mean, it could definitely come out. I think that Lions Guard is going to primarily look for people to protect the Zeus or keep people off of the Zeus. You don't have much peel coming out of Sylvanas other than the ult. So I want to see some strong Guardians picked by Lions Guard. Fafnir, Odin, banned by Lion Guard. Over to Optimus Gang for their final ban here. We'll see the last couple of picks coming through. Zeus and Sylvanas together. We've spoken about that before in the past, totally, but it's such a nice, easy combo that I think it was Eager with the first ones that was like, look how easy this can be. Eager versus Sword comes to mind in the Super Regionals last year. Eager ran it 
three games, and the one game that they lost, Soar were the ones that ran it in that set in the Super Regional. So this strategy is not uncommon in the SPL. So Optimus Gang focused on the junglers there with their assassin bands over to Lion Guard now. They still need a jungler and a solo laner too, and there's the nemesis. Yep, finally. <laughs> not scared of it though. I'm really surprised that Optimus Gang focused on Kamazots and Thor and not this nemesis. I think people look away from that the team fight gods, or they look towards them, and they don't primarily think this nemesis is actually going to completely destroy Zhang, and it is. Really going to cause issues. Would you like to see a spear coming out? Because we've seen a lot of nemesis go for Sunder in space for almost two ultimates. If we, you could. I mean, there's no reason not to. That Zhang's not going to go anywhere. They don't have a Kepri this game, so you're not wasting anything. Just drop everything into Zhang, kill him, and you're good to go. Balona and Amaterasu for Optimus Gang to round it out. They're good mobility and in team fights, but which one's going to be the one that's peeling here, Tolly? Or is it going to be a, a case of self peeling for the back line of Optimus Gang. It could be a case where Optimus Gang are going to be playing more passive and defensive and allowing line guards to kind of force the issue and then use all their ultimates defensively, trying to catch anybody out of position and then use these huge area of effect ultimates to dissect the team fights and separate them into like two different groups. This time round, you went last game of Optimus Gang. Do you feel that draft is good enough this one? Weekend? I don't. They put a lot of pressure on this Jean Kui. If he falls behind, they have no magic damage. What no. about you, Tully? I like Optimus's gang draft, but at the same time, Line Guards looks a little bit more intimidating, especially if Rearward can get off to a great start with his nemesis. Well, I do feel myself, Line Guards draft looks pretty standard. What we've seen of old Optimus gangs a bit more up in the air. We'll see how this one plays out, though, as Agro and Taco take it away. That's right, and we're going to see a couple gods that we haven't seen in a little bit. Well, really, only one, and that's Tyr. Why haven't we seen Tyr? I, I mean, Tyr's just been kind of overlooked considering that yeah. we've seen so much from the Cabrakens, the Terras, the Osiruses even. Sure. And on top of that though, I'm sure we can get a little bit excited seeing that Nemesis of go course. through. Of course. Has to be. And it's very surprising to me that Optimus Dang decided not to ban it away because when you lock in Zhang Kui, every mid player that plays Zhang Kui says, yeah, I'll play Zhang as long as we ban Nemesis. I don't want to <laughs> play against Nemesis. And then they don't ban Nemesis and what do you know, Rearward decides to pick it up. It's gonna be difficult, like we can said, if they lose that John Kui, Optimus Gang have no more magical power left. And then with the focus that's going to be on him already, as with this composition would be normally, just because of the Nemesis, it's gonna make it even doubly so, because then Lion Guard can just kind of stack physical protection and try and take Tins out early on in the fights. It's, and that's exactly what I was just about to bring up, Agro. It's, it's not even necessarily the lack of magical damage that could be an issue. It's just the fact that when you put four physicals onto one team, I mean, that's just a free for any support in the world. Frezzy can build a Nimi and Lion second item if he really wanted to. Ducky can be extremely tanky as well. Either way, the one thing that I think Lion Guard's composition could be lacking is Peel for Shadow Nightmare. Zeus, we saw what could happen whenever uh, last guy last time, whenever Optimus Gang and Tins had a tough time handling all the pressure put onto him on a Zeus. Shadow Nightmare may not get the same sort of protection that he did in game one. But Lion Guard probably going to just be looking for the wombo combos, much like what we saw from them last game, where they had the Neath ultimate, they had the Jean Kui and the Kamazots for the cleanup crew, just in case. And now this time around, it'll probably be Rearward with the initiation factor. Popping that Nemesis ult into a Zeus, that's, that's some pretty immediate damage without a doubt the, as much as i uh, as much as we talked about this jean qui pick and how important it's going to be for tins to play well in this game if they want to keep their spring split alive i'm looking at cosmic this cupid ultimate is going to be huge look at all the things that shuts down ducky might get shut down in the solo lane somersault on top of him one hp juking around in the minions trying to buy time for his cooldowns he's going to try and get into the jungle the bludgeon not quite enough damage and ducky somehow escapes with his life I can't even believe the jukes from the Duckster right now. <laughs> there's just, there's no stopping this guy. He's unreal, man. And I, I, I'm I, going back to this Cupid pick, though, I was very surprised to see Ducky pick tier into the Cupid because that's like the worst matchup ever. You don't, you cannot fearless in either but he your. He is fearless. Well, clearly, because he's not worried <laughs> about that Fields of Love. I might be if I were Ducky, but that's why Ducky's here. And. I'm well here. Uh-oh, Sibby, Fearless into that tower. Rear, we're going to put a little extra damage and look at the rotation coming from Frezzy and Shadow Nightmare Root onto Sibby. There's the Chain Lightning. Sibby's going to fall for the first blood. And Gorgonzola pulled back in by Frezzy. A quick reaction time on the beads, but I don't think it's going to be enough to save him. Shadow Nightmare picks up both in the solo lane. An early lead here for Lion Guard.
That was a phenomenal pull by Frezzy on that Sylvanas and pulling the beads as well out of Gorgonzola and for him to still lose his life there. That's that's not the start that you want to have on the Humbots. Now, I know it gets memed a lot, but Frezzy on Sylvanas this is you, a god that you know he's comfortable playing, especially on LAN. It, of course, didn't have the success that uh, he and Obey wanted last season at the World Championships. But you can see he's already in the zone with that early pool, securing the double kill for his mid laner. That's a scary proposition to go up against the Zeus, who already has two kills before the three minute mark. And speaking earlier, you, you were talking about being concerned for Shadow Nightmare not in the peel. You don't need peel when you do too much damage. That's, Zeus, that's Zeus's motto. Who needs, <laughs> who needs survivability when I can just kill everyone? That's, that's the entire idea behind the character in Shadow Nightmare. Getting off to a good start here. Cosmic zoning Flurry Q a bit. A nice heart bomb. Going to secure that. And then the Fields of Love on top of it. Flurry Q forced to beads to get out of danger there because he didn't have that Petrify available. Still only level four. Heads up play there from Cosmic to know that Flurry Q has to use a defensive cooldown. I'm kind of surprised, though, to see Flurry Q opt to burn his beads there. He was far enough underneath his T1 tower that I don't think Cosmic could have safely dove him and actually survived. That's true, but either way, Flurry Q uh, decided to play it more safe than sorry, just in case. Frezzy not there with that pull, though. Either way, Shadow Nightmare still has a lead in this mid lane. Rearward on this Nemesis going to try and invade the enemy jungle. Ducky's on his way as well, taking advantage of that lane pressure given to him by the rotation from Shadow Nightmare and Frezzy. Speed buff does go down, but not in Lion Guard's favor. That's going to go over to Gorgonzola, who's still sitting at level four. And rough stuff for Humbots, being this far behind already to a Nemesis, just now hitting level five, but Rearward peeping level six. And I love this idea for both Shadow Nightmare and Rearward to back Frezzy as well. They all back and get boots too. You'll see a lot of players stick around, wait it out, try and get that boots three so they get a huge power spike as soon as they back. But instead, a Lion Guard opts to just get the extra mobility and slide a bit of extra damage to make sure they're in position to invade. The invade doesn't go their way on the right hand side, but the idea is there. And uh, I really like the build path that they're going for early on here. And already, Gorgonzola trying to contest those fire elementals, but Real War more than happy to get in the way. But that leaves Shadow Nightmare and the crew, and the crew to try and take down this Gold Fury, potentially. Optimus Gang did this exact same thing in Game 1. Lion Guard going to take a page out of their book in Game 2 and get an easy Gold Fury early on. Five minutes in, Lion Guard secure the first big objective of the game, courtesy of that Zeus ult on Shadow Nightmare, and push their lead up above 2,000 gold. And now the rest is just going to be farming up the lanes and buffs for Lion Guard. And overall, that takes so much map pressure away from Flurry Q because now he can continue to play as passively as he wants to without having to worry about Cosmic pressuring him underneath his tower and then looking to secure Gold Fury with his team. So Flurry Q has played basically every lane all split passively. Is this a lane that he has to play passively or is it just because that's what he likes to do? That's a lane he should definitely play passively against a Cupid. Cupid can do a surprising amount of damage with the Fields of Love and the Heart Bomb combination. Plus he has so much sustainability in comparison to a Medusa due to his hearts. Attack speed on top of that once you start leveling up his dash on the three and it's just not a matchup you want to try and take. Well then it works out nicely for what Flurry Q wants to do. Sibby almost found that solo kill in the solo lane, but uh, even even 2v1 up against Ducky and Rearward, but Ducky knew exactly how much damage he was going to take and walked out without much issue. Attack speed boots, the, the call here for Sibby, the ninja tabby. Do you like this pickup on him or would you rather see him go for the power option and with the warrior tabby? I prefer the Ninja Tabby at this point in time because Bologna versus Tyr is typically a losing matchup due to the fact that Tyr has the cancellation option with his Fearless for a large portion of the Bologna's clear because typically you opt for Bludgeon even in that kind of matchup. And speaking uh -oh. of opting, Tins. He's in trouble, but Gorgonzola turns it around with that defensive Fear to Weevil knock up there, but Tins is knock up immune during his ultimate. Detonate damage not going to quite be enough to knock down the enemy mid laner, but Lion Guard do be out that Aegis Amulet for in exchange for a couple of their own ultimates. I, I think that that's pretty much worth it. Granted that Lion Guard don't get picked at here. Well, Lion Guard trying to steal away the speed buff once more. That speed buff go down in favor of 
Optimus Gang once more? No. Lion Guard do secure it, even through that monkey bounce. Coming out of Gorgonzola, rearward. He's the last one behind, but with that double dash, he's going to be able to get out of danger in this scenario. Nemesis now gets a recent buff. Do remember that it's not only picked here because of the excellent matchup up against Jean Kui, but now can uh, cancel her dash, use Slice and Dice, throw out an auto attack, anything of that nature, and then, du and then dash again before you had to commit both dashes at once. I think that's a pretty significant buff that... Uh, some some viewers at home may not recognize as such. And little by little, Lion Guard slowly exerting dominance over the jungle, putting so much pressure onto every single one of these camps that are available. And that's really what they need to be doing. And just slow bleed to Optimus has led to a 3K gold lead on top of the gold figure that they were able to pick up early on. Just about. Oracles have respawned on this left-hand side. Hoek, the first one there to try and claim them for Optimus Gang. And he will do just that. Secures both over top of the damage from Flurry Q and Frezzy. Slight win there for Optimus Gang, but as you mentioned, I think they just need to do a better job of controlling their buffs. Their jungle has been subject to invade from minute one. And already you could see that part of the, the losing matchup for Bologna starting to shine through. Tyr has such a massive heal on his ability, and it's just absolutely devastating for a Bologna to try and deal with at times. Well, Flurry Q almost got dove underneath that tier one tower on the left. Hoek still forcing him out. Meanwhile, on the right, Lion Guard, there's a four-man grouping to knock down Sibby's tower, who is forced to just stand there and watch. No response coming from Optimus Gang as they grouped up on that left-hand side. In fact, Gorgonzola is just going to back after clearing that purple buff. A wave is going to go for free for Tins, but Lion Guard still posturing on this right-hand side because of the lack of response from Optimus Gang. Optimus Gang is just so spread out right now. Gorgonzola only just now making his rotation over. Hoek and Cosmic so intent on trying to kill Flurry Q underneath his own tower, but just no success whatsoever. In fact, both are forced to escape as Sibi fell to the hands of Frezzy on that right side. Yeah, Flurry Q had to ult and use his purification beads, but he got two ultimates down for that and still defended that tier one tower on the left. Optimus Gang seem to be a little bit uh, frazzled right now. They're, they are definitely starting to struggle at this point in time. And you can already see a lot of physical defensiveness starting to be built on the side of Lion Guard. Ducky has the Breastplate of Valor finished. You've got Rear Ward, who's no, no doubt building into a similar Breastplate yeah. of Valor because it's CDR reduction for a Nemesis. That's perfect. Absolutely. And then you've got that Dynasty Plate Helm for Shadow Nightmare in that mid lane, giving him a bit of extra physical protection. And of course, the Sovereignty. No Mark of the Vanguard here for Frezzy, which may seem a little bit curious considering it's physical protection and that's what he wants. But it's about giving that physical protection aura to the rest of his team. And I really like that decision to rush the aura item. 3,000 gold in the lead is Lion Guard. And they look to extend that even further. Cosmic, the only one on this left side of the map, trying to get in position to steal away this Gold Fury, but will not do so successfully. Lion Guard, despite it being only up three kills, are up about 4,000 gold just due to the map pressure that they've had. Ducky goes up and down, playing aggressively. Stunned out, Fear No Evil, another stun coming up on top. And Sibby's the one to put Optimus Gang on the board. First kill for the Challenger Cup team in game number two. I don't think Ducky was expecting the three-man ulting rotation there, but probably should have just played it safe at that point in time once he saw the, the bots was deciding to commit. Either way, Ducky falls at the end of the day, so Optimus can get at least a little bit of gold in their pockets. But in terms of who they wanted to kill, I don't think Ducky was necessarily very high on that list. He's going uh, to be your tanky soul laner basically regardless of if you kill him Early on in this sort of scenario, Cosmic might be in a bit of trouble, but Flurry Q is not going to be able to make him pay for invading their red buff. Did steal it away from that of Lion Guard. Yeah, I, I think the kills should would Optimus Gang would have rather gotten that kill onto someone like Shadow Nightmare or maybe even Frezzy, who's got a kill to his name. Ducky, he's he's going to be chilling no matter what at this stage of the game. Ducky is just there to be a raid boss later on and completely tanking every single physical aspect on the side of Optimus Gang. Don't forget, as, as he levels that change stance, the third ability for Tyr, he's going to get extra protections when in that defensive stance. He's already going to be stacking quite a bit. So you can see by the, the early stages of his build, another objective goes down for Lion Guard. 
without much ado from Optimus Gang, but now they're gonna try and fight on these top right hand harpies. There's the Fear No Evil, but Rearward immediately turns it around onto Gorgonzola. The ultimate out of tins doesn't do enough damage. He's forced to run away. Eagles rally on the Shadow Nightmare. Bludgeon is interrupted beautifully there by Frezzy. Rotation from Cosmic is good. Fields of Love only hits Frezzy though. Ducky again in that front line, and Hoek will give him death number two early on. And already, oh, Frezzy with another great pull. Sivy just completely decimated underneath that tier one tower. Frezzy has a, his hook percentage, not particularly high, but in terms of what line guard get off those hooks, has been phenomenal. The early kill on that solo side, and right there, Sibby plucked underneath the tower. Hoek almost fall, fell as well to that Petrify coming out of Flurry Q. But Lion Guard, thanks to Frezzy, even it up. Solo laner for solo laner. But again, it was Lion Guard who got that objective before the engagement even started. And that's really just been the main issue here for Optimus Gang. If they wanted to try and make such a physical with such a heavy physical composition work, they needed that early lead, especially with Cupid and Matarazzi support and the Bologna. But it's so hard for them to establish that when they're just never grouped together and their ward coverage had just not been available. That's the thing is that the team fight potential for Optimus Gang is phenomenal. They've got tons of AOE. Alaterasu in the support role is picked because of her team fighting presence as well as her early laning phase. But in early boxing potential, but her team fighting presence is phenomenal. Look at all the AOE Optimus Gang has to offer. They've got that Zhong Ultimate, the Eagles Rally, the Fear No Evil, the Fields of Love. Dazzling Offense can hit multiple members without much issue. Optimus Gang's team composition is designed to fight together, and that's the one thing they really haven't done yet. And they're probably banking, just trying to wait it out a little bit longer to see if they can get some penetration online to really burst down Lion Guard in the way that you'd want with the Humbats ultimate proc. But oh, again, Tins plucked back into danger. Frezzy gonna get credit where he deserves it. But there's the blink in from Gorgonzola. Shadow Nightmare uses both of his relics to try and survive. Ducky delivers Sibby to the mid lane, but Shadow Nightmare he gets exploded by Cosmic rearward in trouble. But a good heal off that. Retribution Shield knocks him back up to full HP, one for one. And again, Optimus Gang and Lion Guard trade positions, mid laner for mid laner. And Flurry Q just always seems a little bit too late to these rotations in comparison to Cosmic. And part of that's largely due to the fact that he keeps wanting to finish farming off the waves in the dual lane to make sure he doesn't miss too much. But geez. Pull Frezzy. again onto Hoek, and Ducky CCs him, blocks the dash as well. Ducky gets credit, but once more, it's Frezzy that sets it up for Lion Guard. 2-0 and 4 for the support, who's absolutely killing it so far on this Sylvanas. The gold lead now around 4,500 gold. Gold Fury due to respawn in just about 20 seconds as Lion Guard looks to knock out Optimus Gang here in the second round of the European Gauntlet. Frezzy's definitely looking for redemption, I think, on this tree, and he's finding it. Absolutely, though I'm looking at his build, this Sunder right now for Frezzy. Are you worried at all about the lack of shell up against Jean Kui and Cupid Alt and, you know, Fear No Evil, all these sorts of AOE abilities? Normally, I would be, but considering that... Oh, again? Are you kidding me? Tins, get back in here. He forced into the Aegis, but it's not going to matter. Frezzy is on fire with these pulls. I just, I, I honestly can't believe it. It's been absolutely incredible. Just every single time when they least expect it, they just can't afford to walk around these corners any longer. Frezzy going to try and get it, but that time off the mark, apparently he can miss once we hit the mid stages of the game. Look at Cosmic's positioning around the backside here, looking for Shadow Nightmare, who has no relics. There's the Heart Bomb and the Fields of Love. Sibby joins his Hunter to clean up the mid laner for Shadow Nightmare. Cosmic beads is out that Fearless. There's the Fear No Evil to prevent the death for now, but Flurry Q's gonna be able to pick him up. Ducky had him covered just in case with that Lawbringer over the top. All three members of Optimus Gang on the retreat. After that meditation, they think about turning and burning, but Frenzy's level 14 right now. He's 3-0 and 5 and just way too healthy. Can tank up anything that Optimus Gang can really throw his way. Shadow Nightmare might as well be the support at this point in time because he's kind of just helping pick up a little bit of assist for Frezzy, if anything. I mean, Frezzy's got a higher level than the, his mid laner right now, and it's really not saying anything about Shadow Nightmare's farm or lack thereof. It's about Frezzy, who's just been all over the map, setting up where he where he goes, death follows. And that's really the uh, the main idea. And that's always been the case with Frezzy. 
you don't know if it's going to be his death or the enemy's, but there's going to be death somewhere. <laughs> Uh, that's that's very very true to a T, but thankfully for Optimus Gang, since they were able to secure the kill onto Shadow Nightmare as well as force out his ultimate, that does prevent Lion Guard from looking to from picking up the Gold Fury at that point in time. However, it's still fair game for now. But Gold Fury started up, and Shadow Nightmare has both his relics. Can't say the same about Tins. Gold Fury already down to below half HP. It's secured. Lion Guard get their third of the game. Cosmic tried to do the exact same play he did last time, but the rest of his team was not there to contest. Now 5,000 gold, but this time Optimus Go Optimus Gang get an objective of their own. Recognize they can't defend that Gold Fury, and instead grab the Portal Demon. But still, forfeiting the goal fury to a team that's already establishing a decent bit of a gold lead isn't necessarily the position that you want to be in because that's just going to permit Lion Guard to maintain their grouping and keep pressuring down the lanes now rather than the objectives of both of them being taken off the map. And the sieging potential for Lion Guard's composition is pretty strong because of how much physical protection they're able to stack. Medusa pretty good at knocking down towers, even with the limited penetration that Flurry Q has right now, only courtesy of that Aussie. And the sustain out of Frezzy that's been so important, and it has it's kind of flown under the radar so far, but it really starts to shine in these sort of grouping up and sieging down tower scenarios. And now Tins just trying to get as many stacks possible into his ultimate for the next team fight. But, you know, another thing that I, I, I just noticed, they won that Gold Fury fight pretty soundly, and they were actually grouped up for it. And I think that was the only point in time we've really seen Optimus Gang be grouped. Yeah, without a doubt. They've got tons of jungle control. Like we mentioned, I mean, it's just AoE ult after AoE ult. And Optimus Gang really took advantage in that it said that one Gold Fury attempt, but as soon as Lion Guard got in position to try it again, Optimus Gang was nowhere to be found. Frezzy can't find that pull there in the mid lane, but another grouping here. Cosmic starting to rotate in. Can't quite find the Heart Bomb onto Rearward in that scenario. We're about 19 minutes in. Lion Guard doubling Optimus Gang in kills, 8-4. to four. The gold lead right around 5,000. Lion Guard won game one of this set. In a pretty back and forth affair, but it only took one fight and a fire giant for Lion Guard to close it out. Trying to do the same here. Cosmic knocks down that tier one tower, 500 gold for Optimus Gang. But Lion Guard's gonna respond with a tier one of their own. But this one, that's in the middle lane. And not to mention, five people are typically better at pushing than one. And without Cosmic's Fields of Love, that could spell disaster. Blake into the back line by Gorgonzola. He eats the Divine Retribution as well. And Ducky's going to be able to clean him up. It's Ducky and Rearward in the front, zoning back both Tins and Hoax. Sibby tried to do the same to Lion Guard, but they have enough damage to make him pay for it. Cosmic does get that Tier 2 tower on the left, but Lion Guard, they're going to be able to do the same in the middle lane. Both teams get about 2,000 gold between the two towers, but it's Lion Guard who's in control as Frezzy finds another pull onto Hoek. Tins is gonna fall here after the slow from that Petrify. Flurry Q able to pick him up. Middle Phoenix looks likely to fall. This could potentially be game. There are four members dead on the side of Optimus Gang. The only one left to defend is Cosmic and not looking to push it down just yet, but you saw the surrender vote coming through. Yeah, I think that's just a frustration F6. You know, you get Hoek gets pulled for the, what feels like the millionth time into death, and sometimes you just gotta throw that out there. Again, Cosmic did get two towers on the left-hand side, but I really think that Optimus Gang need him in these team fights. That Fields of Love so important at controlling Ducky Sibby. Knows this Fire Giant's going on, teleports behind the enemy team, but he's got a Nam ult waiting for him. Immediately, Flurry Q and Rearward go onto him. Frezzy pulls him into the Fire Giant pit that may have helped it out. No, actually, Ducky's waiting right there, and Flurry Q is going to be able to secure it. Fire Giant going to go the way of Lion Guard. And look at where Cosmic and, uh, and Gorgonzola are heading immediately to that left side, hoping that Lion Guard may take their time and backing to defend. But Lion Guard understands this is clearly what Optimus Gang likes to do, and instead send Shadow Nightmare back to defend it. And Shadow Nightmare having his Zeus ultimate available, that's more than enough time that he can buy for himself to defend this Phoenix. Now he does not have his purification beads, but that ultimate from Cosmic, just not quite good enough. A lot of damage on a Cosmic actually, who's standing just outside that Lightning Storm range. Middle Phoenix falling a little bit low, but not low enough for Gorgonzola and Cosmic to secure it. Rearward, Flurry Q, all in tow. Fear No Evil, nicely timed there out of Gorgonzola to save the life of his hunter and prevent any active usage 
uh, to be necessary. But having to burn both of those ultimates, it just means that now Lion Guard are definitely free to push. Without a doubt, the, 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 the two big uh, area denial ultimates that Optimus Gang have available to them. Jean Kui's ultimate can fill that role, but it's a little bit more damage oriented. So I think we'll see Optimus Gang just kind of hang out and allow Lion Guard to push up at this stage because of the fact that those ultimates are on cooldown. The good news, if you're rooting for Optimus Gang, is that Shadow Nightmare did burn his Aegis. Thought that uh, Gorgonzola was likely to blink in and use that Fear No Evil right on top of him on that Fields of Love. So use that defensive cooldown. But I don't know if uh, if Optimus Gang know that that's on cooldown. I, I, I don't think that they were able to see it just around the corner. I think he might have been hidden well enough behind the wall to get away with it. But it might not even matter at this point in time because Lion Guard have more than enough damage with the Nemesis ultimate to purse down whoever they choose to go on. Well, left side Phoenix is their focus for the time being. Rearward's first one in. He's going to take a good chunk of damage. There's a the dazzling offense coming out of Hoak. Frezzy Force use his ultimate defensively. Petrify coming out of Flurry Q. Is it enough? But the detonate from Shadow Nightmare is Tins falls for the fourth time this game. Ducky blinking into the back line. Can't quite find that Fearless. Now controlled by the Fields of Love. Lots of damage onto the solo laner for Lion Guard, but more or onto Cosmic. Flurry Q able to pick up number five. This is one of his best games of the split, and he picked a good time for it. Rearward's going to survive thanks to that Retribution Shield. Left side, Phoenix down. Lion Guard posturing to try and end the game. And Ducky still having his ultimate available. I think that Lion Guard are definitely going to just look to end this one. Gorgonzola jumps out after some damage. There's that Lawbringer you were talking about, but the Fearless does not find a home. Fire minions are in the Titan room. Gorgonzola very, very low, but the Detonate doesn't clean him up. There's the Nemalt onto Sibi, who dashes towards his fountain, but he's got to make a choice. Does he die trying to defend, or does he watch as his Titan and his Spring split both come to a close? Optimus Gang tried to do their best. They were able to take the 2-0 victory up against Sanguine, but Lion Guard was just too staunch a defender. And unfortunately enough for Optimus Gang, Lion Guard pretty comfortably secured the 2-0 victories, I would say. That, that was just a, a good, strong, objective showing from Lion Guard more than anything else. I really do think Optimus Gang's team fight potential was through the roof with that team composition. They just didn't recognize that and execute upon it. And that's the problem we see with a lot of these Challenger Cup teams that are just trying to break in and play against these pro level teams is that the pro teams, they know to how to play to their composition strengths. The Challenger Cup teams do sometimes, but not always. And it's I think just that the was lack the case of here. experience. That's, that's really what it yeah. boils down to. They, they don't have as much experience. And granted, you have Flurry Q, who's new. You have Rearward, who's new. But they had the veteran leadership of Shadow Nightmare ultimately to rein them in and make sure that they bring it home. Well, either way, Lion Guard, they're going to move on to face Elevate, but we're not going to get there quite yet. And first, we got to go over just what happened in game two. We've got Hindu on the desk with a couple good dudes to break it down. Good dudes, depending on the opinion you think about them. Optimus Gang, though, are out. They put on a performance today, but they walked into Lion Guard totally. Game one went Lion Guard's way. Game two, even more so Lion Guard's way. Absolutely. It was all the Frezzy show on the Sylvanas. Surprisingly enough, also going for the Sunder. Now, normally you don't see these Guardian supports going mm. for the Sunder, but his style on Frezzy is to be that damage dealer regardless, and it also sets up his teammates very well. Totally. Some of these, sorry, we can, I should say, some of these pulls in this game coming out from Frezzy is one of the reasons why I guess he goes to it. Obviously, People view Frezzy as a bit of a meme when it comes to Sylvanas because of the world's performances, but he played fantastic here. No, he's actually a very good Sylvanas, no matter how many memes he gets towards him. You saw all these pulls. This is insane. Over and over again, just picking people up. And Jean Kui, this is what happens if you get isolated as a Jean Kui, totally. You can't get away. Which is why we see the Nemesis picked after the secondary ban phase. And not only was the Nemesis picked, but the itemization choice for the Nemesis. Full CDR, best player of Valor into Yodens right off the bat. This is like that season two style Nemesis. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what I kind of did back in the day. It works out well. He, he was tanky. No one could do anything to him. And he was on that Jean every single time. And the mid lane play as well from Zeus. Let's have a look at the post game stats. Have a little look at how this one broke down overall. From the outset, though, it was two kills for Shadow Nightmare right at the start on a Zeus. That's something you don't want to do, Tolly. No, Zeus getting off to a start right off the bat makes it very difficult for the rest of your team. The damage was just through the roof for Lion Guard Esports, closing out the game in a very quick fashion. What's your biggest takeaway from that week and looking at what Lion Guard's performance was here up against Optimus Gang? What can Lion Guard need to? Is there anything that's really obvious they need to work on here? Well, it was just nice to see that you said Shadow Q or Shadow got ahead, right? And the whole team 
kind of the other team focused him, and the rest of his team picked him up. They were all got in the game after he had that lead. You thought maybe he would just keep being the one to carry, but the other team did a very good job at carrying him. And Ducky did what he usually does for Lion Guard, but Rearwood, during this roster, had very good performances, always hiding those damage charts the whole time, totally. He's been able to be all over the map any single time his team asks upon him to do so. And not only that, he's experimented with his build. Not only was his regular items a little bit off the wall, but his relic selection on the Bracer, he was able to bait out so many cooldowns, get the health back, and not only that, reset some of his cooldowns to be able to just continue the onslaught. Well, credit where it's due, though. Two Optimus gang for all the work they put in to get as far as they did. Already defeating Sanguine and making sure they do get a duck for the entire season. But standing by right now is F. Dot to interview one of those players. One of those players, it's Gorgonzola here. First of all, I want to say congratulations on your earlier win. I'm going to do one of these. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, for the people at home, like I said, you're a challenger team. Uh, why don't you just introduce yourself to everybody? Uh, hello, I'm Gorgonzola. I'm uh, an Italian player and uh, I was playing for Optimus Gang. Um, that's it. <laughs> that's it, yeah. And you guys you guys played really strong. Uh, well, what's the biggest difference? You guys dominated in the challenger scene, and then you come here, you're actually able to find the win against Sanguine. What's the biggest difference uh, between the challenger scene and the pro-level teams? I think that the SPL team actually know what they, do they have to do, <laughs> and they group up more, and they, they know when to sneak objectives, when to reset. Like, they have so much knowledge of the game, so it's harder to play against them, of course. Do you think that playing against them has given you and your team sort of a, a crash course? Do you think that you're going to be better after playing against these teams? I, I think so. I think so. Now we know how to how to play against Lion Guard, um, like a, lit a little bit better. Just a lot, lot of a uh, lot of stuff to learn while doing. Yeah, yeah. We still have um, a ton to learn. Yeah, of course. So coming in the future, you guys have relegations, and, and you guys have. What do you think the future holds for Optimus Gang? I think they can make SPL not easily, but they can win the relegation. So. Let's hope they do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys looked really strong. You specifically, um, have you played for any higher-end teams or before? Or what's your I competitive didn't. history? Uh, I never played in in, uh, in the SPL. I've always been stuck, uh, let's say, in the in the Challenger Cup. Um, I've been here to, to Alpharetta once with Burrito Gaming, and we won. But uh, that's it. I don't have uh, um, like. I don't have um, experience just yet. Experience, exactly. Well, that, that's what this is for, and I think yeah. you, I think you got a lot of new fans just on your performance out Let's here hope today. So. <laughs> um, do you stream at all or anything like that? Or um, I quite rarely. I don't I don't stream that much, but sometimes I do, like once a month. So what do you do outside of Smite? Do you go to school? Do you work? Yeah, or? I'm just 16, so for now I just go go to school. I study IT in uh, in Italy, and it's pretty good. It seems to be working out <laughs> so far. Uh, you and your team, how long has everybody really been together? Because you guys looked like a well-oiled machine. We looked like, and yeah, but um, we had to bring three subs, and I'm, I'm one of the subs, because um, three players couldn't uh, come to LAN. Well, like, uh, yeah, visa issues and stuff like that. Hey what, man, what can you do? When you have an opportunity like this, you yeah. take it <laughs> and you run with it. Yeah. I think right now you put yourself more in the minds of not only the fans at home, but also a couple of the players as well. What do you think is your the strongest part of your personal game? Uh, definitely not the mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I can make some good calls and uh, I know how to farm properly most of the times. And uh, I think that's my strongest part. I'm not that good with mechanics, in my opinion. You say that, but I saw that Susano game you had against Sanguin. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. And uh, the three-man pull was was hot. I, I shouted when I, when I did it. I was so <laughs> hyped and stuff. It was good. So that's one of my, my favorite questions to ask players is, you know, you've played in the Challenger Cup at home, in your bedroom, yeah. or wherever you play. What's the biggest difference about coming here to Atlanta and, and playing here in Atlanta? It's like, uh, to be honest, it's shouting to each other. It's so good, man. Like when you do a good play, everybody shouts to them. When they do a good play, you're an objective, they shout to you. It, it's so fun. It's so fun. I love it. Awesome, man. Congratulations one more time. Sorry to see you go. Any shout outs to the fans at home? Uh, sure. Um, say, I want to say hi to my mom, to my dad and uh, to all my Italian fans, I guess. <laughs> Excellent. One more time, it's Gorgonzola. He played jungle for Optimus Gang. I'm sure you'll see more of him in the future. We've got the guys on the desk standing by to bring us more action.